In this video, we're going to be going over the timey wimey Doctor Who Commander deck list. Keep in mind, these videos are designed for players that are brand new to Magic the Gathering. What we're going to do is go over the cards inside this deck so that you know how the deck plays. And by the end of the video, you can decide whether this deck is worth purchasing or not. If you like videos like this, you guys can subscribe because we're going to be doing a review similar to this one for every Doctor Who Commander deck as well as every pre-con that ever releases. When we take a look at this commander deck, let me first say that Doctor Who is something, who is a word that I found myself saying, or what is a word that I found myself saying when I found out that these commander decks were being released? Because let me be real, like I have never heard of Doctor Who ever in my life before. So going into this, I'm anticipating that people watching this video can educate me and others on what Doctor Who is because I have no idea what any of this stuff is. So the first commander that we have here, and I noticed there are two commanders, so it looks like this is a partnered commander deck. Partnered commander deck usually means new players that you have two commanders in the command zone, although they call it Doctor's companion as opposed to being called partner the first partner commander is rose tyler rose tyler gets plus one plus one for each counter on it whenever rose tyler attacks put a time counter on it for each suspended card you own and each permanent you control with the time counter on it so the time counters essentially act like plus one plus one counters buffing rose tyler we can see how that works. Keep in mind, new players hitting a, a specific person in the game of Commander with 21 points of damage with your Commander will knock them out of the game. She just started off as a 2-2 for 2 mana, so it would take a lot of time counters to make Rose Tyler a Commander damage threat. But it, it seems like a cool card. We'll see what the other Commander does over here, the 10th Doctor. Whenever you attack, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. Put three time counters on it. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. You can pay seven mana to time travel three times. Activate only as a sorcery. To be real guys, I have no idea what time travel three times means. And I'm sure as we keep reading over here, we'll learn what time traveling is. So I can't really decide on what I think about this card yet. But it does give you three cards on top of your library whenever you uh, attack which is pretty cool. So these two cards kind of feed into one another where Rose Tyler is getting buffed by the cards you're exiling with the 10th Doctor, the non-land cards you exile with the 10th Doctor. I will tell you though, when you're playing this deck new players, Rose Tyler does cost two mana. And I think that as a new player, you would want to go and play Rose Tyler right away. Although I think that waiting until you have cards suspended and potentially give away to give Rose the ability to attack the moment she enters the battlefield would be a way that I would rather play this deck because if your Rose Tyler sits on the battlefield and she gets removed and now she costs four mana to play and then if that happens again now she costs six mana to play. So wait until you have a board state where you have a ton of cards suspended so that as she attacks She's getting plus five, plus five. Now she's seven power and figure out a way to give some unblockable or evasion when she attacks and you have a pretty tough creature. The first card that we have here in the deck is Astrid Peth, two mana, another legendary creature. Whenever Astrid enters the battle with their attacks, create a food token. That, I had no idea that they were gonna talk about food tokens in this deck. Whenever you sacrifice a clue or a food, Astrid Peth explores. All right, that's a card that does something. Uh, flesh duplicate two mana you may have flesh duplicate enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except as vanishing three if that creature does not have vanishing okay so in three turns i'm pretty sure vanishing three means in three turns that creature is going to go away so you temporarily have something copied rory williams partner with amy pond okay First strike, lifelink. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than exile, exile it with three time counters on it. 
it gains suspend then investigate so if this is in your command zone you're gonna have to when you cast it you're gonna have to exile it immediately with three time counters on it and then it's gonna gain suspend so in three turns when you cast it you have to wait three turns for you to get the creature on the battlefield hoping that amy does something to reduce time counter so you can get rory onto the battlefield faster but he is just a 3-3 with first strike and lifelink so i don't know if it, like i don't know if i really this card seems very vanilla first strike lifelink 3-3 you cast it and it has to gain suspend like why does that matter we have a uh, time beetle Whenever Time Beetle deals combat damage to a player, time travel. Okay, so for each suspended card you own and each permanent you control with a time counter on it, you may add or remove a time counter. Okay, so time travel essentially gives you the ability to cast cards that are suspended faster. Okay, we have Amy Pond. Okay, so partner with Rory, which we talked about earlier. Whenever Amy deals combat damage to a player, choose a suspense, suspended card you own and remove that many time counters on it. So you're removing time counters equal to the number, the amount of damage that you do. So that seems pretty powerful in relation to what, you know, probably a lot of other cards that are much more powerful that have suspend that you want to be able to cast quicker. Keep in mind guys, when, I, when I'm talking about suspend, I'm basically saying that if I cast a spell with suspend, and let's say it has two suspend counters on it, every time it's my turn, I get to remove one of the suspend counters. Once it goes to my turn and I remove a suspend counter and there's nothing on the card anymore, it gets cast automatically. This card essentially allows you to play these cards faster because you're removing time counters on it. But you are partnering with Rory, which is essentially just a, a first strike lifelinking 3-3 that puts a clue token into play i don't know that seems really weak idris soul of the tardis vanishing three so in three turns this card is going to go away when idris soul of the tardis enters the battlefield exile another target artifact you control until idris leaves the battlefield idris has all activated and triggered abilities of the exiled card and gets plus x plus x for x is the exiled card's mana value i mean it's cool but then like there has to be some and if you know what these artifacts are you can leave it in the comment section below there has to be some artifacts where that makes it it breaks the artifact and this card is actually incredibly powerful i just don't really know what cards in particular are talking about that you combo with this for it to be good but i'll just say this commander right here has a potential to be extremely powerful based on the artifacts that you can combo it with Martha Jones. When Martha enters the battlefield, investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, Martha Jones and up to one other target creature can't be blocked this turn. Okay. You'll notice that some of these cards over here are grayed out, so I'm just gonna go over all the grayed out cards right now just to get them all out of the way first, really quick. So the first grayed out card is Sibylline Soothsayer. When Sibylline Soothsayer enters the battlefield, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an online card with mana value three or greater. Exile that card with three time counters on it. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Put the rest of the revealed cards in the bottom of your library in a random order. So this essentially gives you a free spell that if you have the ability to remove suspend counters on it, that you can cast immediately. Technically, when you see cards like this, new players, you see there's really only one card in the deck that will have mana value three or greater and it usually leads to a combo that lets you win the game this is not a commander it's not a legendary creature so you know it'd be very uh, rare for you to have this you may play this in a deck that will tutor for this card so that you can do that um but just so you're aware of what people tend to do sometimes with cards like this we have Kate Stewart. Whenever you put one or more time counters on a permanent you control, create a 1 1 white soldier creature token. Whenever Kate Stewart attacks, you may pay 8. If you do, attacking creatures get plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of time counters among permanents you control. That's a pretty good card, guys. I mean, depending on the number of creatures you have on the battlefield, you do have to pay eight mana. And without the color green, it may be difficult for you to be able to get that much mana quickly. However, if you know you do find yourself in that ability and this is your commander late game, you can just play Kate, 
give Kate some way to have haste so Kate immediately enters the battlefield and can attack. You pay eight and you could just end the game. Um, this is a cool card. It's it's, it's low key going to be. It's really straightforward and pretty powerful for new players. I like this card. Dude, is that like a that's a real rhino, bro? Uh, Judoon enforcers trample no more than one creature. This show seems wild, man. That's a rhino. Trample, no more than one creature can attack you each combat, and it has to spend. I like cards that have that general ability. I mean, you pay three mana, suspend six, you'd have to wait six turns unless you have a way to reduce its uh, suspend counters. It's an 8-8 eight, eight with Trample, which is nothing to, to scoff at. Um, you can just cast it straight up for seven mana. But this card seems cool. I mean, any cards that have that general ability that force that reduce your opponent's abilities to attack you, I think are, are fun and welcome. So those are all the cards that aren't popping up. So now we're just gonna go over these things again. We have the 11th Doctor. I'm noticing a pattern here, the 11th. We even have the 9th right after this, whatever that means. 11th Doctor, I am talking, <laughs> okay? Whenever the 11th Doctor deals combat damage to a player, you may exile a card from your hand with the number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. You can pay two mana to give target creature with power three or less unblockable. Guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, like for new players, you guys might wanna buy a different commander deck. Obviously for players that have a ton of experience, you guys can handle the time counters and managing all these things. But I'll tell you from a new player's perspective, I think this deck is gonna be incredibly complex for you to be able to manage all the things that are going on on your side of the board, as well as trying to keep track of what your opponents are doing. This deck is gonna be this deck is you, your brain at the end of your game is going to feel like it's this big playing this commander deck if you're new the ninth doctor haste whenever the ninth doctor becomes untapped during your untapped step you get an additional upkeep after what whenever the ninth doctor becomes untapped during your untapped step you get an additional upkeep after this step guys that's a good card dude and bro wait a minute what if you're able to untap this creature and you get an additional upkeep and then what if you could somehow tap him and then what if you can continuously tap and untap this creature and just continuously gain infinite upkeeps and if you have upkeep triggers that deal damage to your opponents, like deal two damage here, deal one damage here, and if you get infinite upkeeps, you just win the game. I don't know if that's even possible. You let me know in the comments, but that seems like a really powerful card. Adipose Offspring. For those of you who are not aware, Adipose is a medical term for fat. This has Emerge 6. You may cast a spell by sacrificing creature and paying the Emerge cost reduced by the creature's mana value. Okay. When Adipose Offspring enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 white alien creature token. If Adipose Offerings Emerge cost was paid, instead create X of those tokens where X is a sacrificed creature's toughness. This card can go off and can play really well in a deck that wants a lot of creatures. Donna Noble four mana soul bond. Okay. Soul bond means when it enters the battlefield, you get to kind of partner it with another creature on the battlefield and they both gain the ability that says whenever Donna or a creature it's paired with is dealt damage, Donna or that other creature is gonna deal that much damage to target opponent. So if you deal 10 damage to Donna, Donna is going to deal 10 damage to something else. You normally play this, you give Donna indestructible and the other creature indestructible. You cast the card like Blasphemous Act, and then you just deal 26 damage to whoever you want. This card is, is really good, actually. And in the command zone to have that, in the command zone, that's pretty good. Jenny, Generated Anomaly, Double Strike. Whenever Jenny does combat damage to a player, it explores... So you look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, I'm pretty sure you get to put it into your hand. Otherwise, you can just put it into the graveyard, I believe, is what exploring is. Sally Sparrow, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. I always appreciate cards that have this ability. Whenever one or more creatures you control leave the battlefield, investigate. This ability only triggers once each turn. Base of Bow, 
Oh my god. Dude, this show is just like, I, what is that? Alien advisor? So you can tap the face of Bo. You may cast a spell with suspend from your hand. If you do, pay its suspend cost rather than its mana cost. Activate only as a sorcery. You are not alone. Okay. The War Doctor. Whenever one or more other permanents phase out and whenever one or more other cards are put to exile from anywhere, put a time counter on the War Doctor. Whenever the War Doctor attacks, it deals damage equal to the number of time counters on it to any target. If a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. This card kind of reminds me of Alibu, where you're dealing damage when it attacks. This does exile creatures um, when it deals damage, so that's definitely more powerful than what Alibu does. But these cards tend to be extremely oppressive, and yeah, this card is always going to be good. I mean, just destroying things is, is strong. Wilfred Mott. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter in Wilfred Mott. Then look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of time counters on Wilfred Mott. You may put a non-land permanent card with mana value 3 or less from among them on the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I mean, if there's a way for you to just like take a bunch of time counters and just transfer them onto a creature, I could see this card being pretty good, especially because it's a it's a legendary creature. It's a commander, so you could do that from the command zone. I just don't know if there are cards that really have that ability. Next card is Atraxi Warden flying. Whenever Atraxi Warden enters the battlefield, exile up to one target tapped creature. Cool. Six mana, exile something. Blink this, have it re-enter the battlefield, exile something else. It's like a duplicate. It's a good card. Dinosaurs on a spaceship. <laughs> what is going on with this show? Vigilance, Trample. Other dinosaurs you control get plus one, plus one, and have Vigilance and Trample. Great. Whenever a time counter is removed from dinosaurs on a spaceship while it's exiled, create a 2-2 red and white dinosaur creature token with flying in haste. So, this is like a board state on a card if you suspend it, or you can just cast it and have the ability. I like this card, it's really weird. Star Whale, 8 mana, Flying Vigilance. Other creatures you control have Ward 2, and you can pay 2 mana to suspend 6. It is a Flying 8-8, eight, eight, which is cool. And guys, Ward is low-key, very strong. People have to pay 2 extra mana to target your thing with removal, and you'd be surprised how oppressive that ability is sometimes. Guys, like, I can't... Just, just by right now, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be really difficult for me to sit here and tell you whether this deck is really good or not because I just have to see this deck being played. I mean, it... I, I don't really... I rarely play... Like, I personally don't own a commander deck that's built around Suspend, and I own over 100 commander decks. So this is going to be the first deck I've ever owned around Suspend. So I don't really know what to say, how this deck is going to play. So just keep that in mind when I'm as I continue this review. This deck could either be whack or it could either be really powerful. I just... I personally don't really have anything to judge it against right now. Clock spinning, you can buy it back for three mana, so you can pay four mana and put the card back into your hand as you cast it. Choose a counter on target permanent or suspended card, remove that counter. Good. Or you can put another one of those counters on it. Cool. In, in the moments where you need that, it's there. Everybody lives. All creatures gain hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn. Players gain hexproof until the end of turn. Players can't lose life this turn, and players can't lose the game or win the game this turn. What? What is that? All... What? Dude! <laughs> that card is so awesome! All creatures gain hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn. Guys, everything I just said about this commander deck not being good just completely changed. This deck is good. This card is fantastic. You know, this card is is a staple in Commander. This card is super strong. Just buy this deck. This deck will be like $40. This card right now is saying that it's $40. So just this card by itself is, I think, a reason to purchase this deck. Forget what I said. Buy this deck. This card is incredibly good. This card will be in every single competitive white Commander deck or a Commander deck with the color white in it. 
This card is super strong. Fantastic card right here, man. Wow. We have a uh, run for your life. One or two target creatures each gain haste till the end of turn. They can't be blocked. And then you can escape this, which means you get to cast it again from your graveyard. Okay. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey time travel and then draw a card. Okay. Ecstatic beauty exile the top three cards of your library. You may play this card until the end of turn. Put four time counters on each of those cards that have suspend or that has suspend. Okay, just a way to get card advantage. The Wedding of River Song. Draw two cards. I'm going to a wedding this month. Draw two cards, and then you may exile a non land card from your hand with the number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. Then target opponent does the same. Cards exiled this way that don't have suspend gain suspend, and then you time travel. Okay, that's a decent card. You get to draw two cards in the color white. Okay, I'll take that. All of history, all at once. Time travel and storm. Oh, this card could probably end games, guys. Nanogene conversion. Choose target creature you control. Each other creature becomes a copy of that creature until the end of the turn, except it isn't legendary. You see? Now we're talking. This is a card that's going to take a creature that's a legendary creature and make a copy of it. Oh, no. Every creature you control is going to become a copy of the legendary creature. Oh, I love this card. This is a fantastic card. This is another really powerful card, guys. This card goes into so many other commander decks that care about something like this. And legendary creatures are legendary. There's a legendary rule that says if you have more than one legendary creature of the same creature on the battlefield, you have to sacrifice one of them, usually because legendary creatures are so powerful. But with this card, I can just have 10 of them, which is good. Fractured Identity, Exile Target Online Permanent, each player other than its controller creates a token, it's a copy of it, okay. Coward slash killer, target creature can't be blocked this turn and becomes a coward in addition to its other types in time travel. Killer deals three damage to target creature and each other creature that shares a creature type with it. So if you're playing a bunch of tokens, you probably don't want to see that card. Farewell. Oh my god, just putting farewell in a commander deck just like that, bro. Guys, guys, buy this card once this deck releases. I'm telling you, like, dude, you can buy. I wonder how cheap this card's gonna get. Wow, everybody's gonna have farewell now. Dude. Inspiring refrain. Okay, you can draw two cards and then you suspend. Um oh man. Gallifrey falls. Gallifrey falls is four damage to each creature. And then you exile the creatures that die after that. Then you have no more. Any number of target creatures you control phase out. So it's a pretty good protection spell, actually. I would play this just for the phase out portion. And then everything else is just extra. It's just good. Everything comes to dust. Convoke. Okay, so you can reduce the mana value of the spell by tapping creatures you control. Exile all creatures except those that share a creature type with a creature that convoke the spell. Oh, <laughs> this is a one-sided board wipe. Yeah, this is a really good card. Then we have Soul Ring, fantastic. Arcane Signet, good. Lightning Greaves, great. Mind Stone, cool. Lightning Greaves, new players, is a card that says that uh, creatures can't target creatures you control while this is equipped, and the equip cost is zero, so it makes it incredibly strong. Be happy that you have this card. Psychic Paper. A Psychic Paper becomes attached to a creature. Choose a creature card, name, and a creature type. Equipped creature has ward one and can't be blocked and its name and creature type are the last chosen name and creature type. So you get to just like create a creature. TARDIS, what in the? Flying, when TARDIS attacks, if you control a Time Lord, the next spell you cast this turn as Cascade, you may Planeswalk. Okay, seems cool. Talisman of Conviction, cool, it's good mana. Talisman of Creativity, good mana. The moment, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on the moment. You can pay two mana to untap her creature you control. It's gonna phase out until the moment leaves the battlefield. So you wanna phase out your own creature until the moment leaves the battlefield. Interesting. Destroy each non-land permanent with mana value less than or equal to the number of time counters on the moment after you pay three mana, then sacrifice the moment. Okay, so you can sacrifice it to get your thing back, okay. We have Thought Vessel, good card. Rotating Fireplace, 
You can tap this to add an amount of mana equals the number of time counters on it. You can then uh, pay four mana and then time travel. Okay. Sonic Screwdriver. You can tap this to add a mana of any color. Okay. Whoa. You can pay one to untap another artifact. You can pay two to scry and then pay three to give a creature unblockable. This is a good card. This, this has a lot of uses. The Pandorica. Okay, you may choose not to untap the Pandorica during your untap step. You can pay two mana, untap another target and online permanent, then it phases out. It can't phase in for as long as the Pandorica remains tapped. When the Pandorica becomes untapped or leaves the battlefield, that permanent phases in. Understood. Yeah, I mean, it's a good card to just lock something out of the game, which is cool. RMS Titanic Flying Trample. When RMS Titanic deals combat damage to a player, sacrifice it and create that many treasure tokens. All right, seems cool. Wedding Ring, let's keep talking. There's another wedding, bro. Uh, four mana, when Wedding Ring enters the battlefield, if it was cast, target opponent creates a token that's a copy of it. Whenever opponent who controls an artifact named Wedding Ring draws a card during their turn, you draw a card. Whenever opponent who controls an artifact named Wedding Ring gains life, you gain that much life. Cool. This deck is fantastic, guys. This, I'm super happy to see this right now. Regenerations Restored, Vanishing 12. Yeah, so now we have the ruling for Vanishing. This enchantment enters the battlefield with, with 12 counters on it, time counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter from it. When the last one is removed, sacrifice it. So whenever one or more time counters are removed from Regeneration Restored, scry one and gain one life. Then if Regeneration Restored has no time counters on it, exile. When you do take an extra turn after this one. Oh, that's fun. As foretold, once each turn at the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on as foretold. Once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast with mana value X or less, where X is the number of time counters on as foretold this card can be strong in the right situations four nox vanishing four at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase draw a card cool more card draw in white grasp of fate when grasp of fate enters the battle for each opponent exile up to one target and land permanent that player controls yeah that's a really good card guys out of time when out of time enters the battlefield to untap all creatures then phase them out until out of time leaves the battlefield uh, the girl in the fireplace create a 1-1 one, one white human noble creature token with vanishing three that says prevent all damage that would be dealt to this creature then next turn you would create a 2-2 two, two white horse creature token with doctors you control have horsemanship <laughs> and then turn three you'll get something that says whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player time travel okay Crack in time vanishing three. When crack in time enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target creature and opponent controls until crack in time leaves the battlefield. Oh, okay. The 11th hour. Search your library for a doctor card, reveal it and put it into your hand. Okay, four mana for a tutor, it's nice. Create a food token and a one one human creature token with doctor spells that you cast cost one less to cast. Okay, so if you're playing like doctor tribal, I feel like this card would be pretty good. Create a token that's a copy of target creature except it's a legendary named alien. Create a token that's a copy of target creature except it's a legendary alien named prisoner zero. Interesting, whatever that means. The day of the doctor. This is four turns of goodness. For the first three turns, you're going to exile the top card of your library until you exile a legendary card. You may play that card for as long as Day of the Doctor remains on the battlefield. Put the rest of those exiled cards at the bottom of your library in a random order, okay? Choose up to three doctors. You may exile all other creatures. If you do, Day of the Doctor deals 13 damage to you. So it's like a board wipe. Okay, the parting of the ways. First turn, you're gonna exile the top five cards of your library. For each non-land card exiled this way, put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Okay, turn two, you're gonna time travel twice. And then turn three, you're gonna destroy up to one target artifact each opponent controls. For six mana, I, don't know, I probably wouldn't play that card. We have a command tower, cool, deserted beach, good land, evolving wilds, okay, exotic orchard, okay, 
Fiery Islet. Yeah, that's a fantastic card. Uh, Frostboil Snarl, another good land. Good land. Good land. Enters tap, so you can cycle this, so this is good land. Cool, cool. Myriad Landscapes can help you get more mana. Mystic Monastery enters tapped. Um, you can exile this for five mana. Target creature's owner shuffles it into there's. You can pay five mana, exile this card, and target creature's owner shuffles it into their library. Wait, what? You can pay five mana and exile the Ominous Cemetery. Target creature's owner shuffles it into their library. So I'm assuming you target a creature and then they have to shuffle it into their library. I think that's what that means. Path of Ancestry enters tapped. Port Town. Yep, yeah, that's a really good land. Can enter untapped. Um, this also can enter untapped. The mana seems to be really good. Rogue's Passage is going to give uh, your commander unblockable, which is cool. Sky Cloud Expanse, cool. Yeah, it looks like all the lands inside this deck, you know, we have a tap land, tap land, tap land here, but they all scry when they enter tapped, which is cool. Temple of the False God, fine. Thespian Stage, wow. And then we have Thriving Bluffs can enter tapped, but you get to choose a mana that you, or color of mana that you need. Trenzalore Clock Tower. Tap to add blue, put a time counter on the clock tower. You can pay two mana to remove 12 time counters from the clock tower and exile it. Shuffle your graveyard and hand into your library, then draw seven cards. This card can sometime end games in the right deck, especially if you're dealing damage as you're drawing cards. You can just draw seven cards and deal a ton of damage to people sometimes. These cards are good. We have War Room. You can pay three mana and then pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity and you draw a card cool yeah guys this commander deck i mean like i said i'm not too familiar with suspending as a mechanic and how powerful that's going to be so i'm not too sure of the other cards to suspend that exist in magic the gathering right now that are incredibly powerful that may make this deck much stronger than what it probably already is i will say that this deck has one of the most powerful cards I've ever seen in my entire life in Everybody Lives. If this card was uncounterable, this would be just the best card ever made. It seems incredibly strong. There's a reason why it says it's $40 right here. I do like the fact that this deck also comes with Farewell just right there in the box, which is which is wild to me. Um, this also, this three mana all creatures phase out spell over here seems really good too. But man, Everybody Lives is such a good card. And there's so many other good cards inside this deck, like the Lightning Greaves. And just, you know, as foretold, this, this extra turn spell. It's just an incredibly solid commander deck. And, you know, when you're looking to purchase a commander deck as a new player, or even somebody that has more experience, you just want to get value out of the deck. And I will tell you that when anybody anybody that purchases commander deck you're going to get the value of the amount of money you paid for it within this deck this is an excellent purchase i will say though if you are someone who has never played commander before if you're a person that is a doctor who fanatic and you're looking on purchasing which commander deck you want to buy because you just really like doctor who and want to play magic for the first time i'm telling you that this commander deck is going to be this commander deck is for experienced players. If you're gonna sit down and think you're gonna be able to play with this deck as a person who's brand new to Magic the Gathering, I'm telling you, you are gonna, it is your brain, I'm telling you, I said this earlier, is gonna feel like it's this big by the end of your game. If you can master this, there will be nothing that you cannot do in the game of Magic the Gathering because this deck seems like you're managing a lot of different things. However, just keep that in mind because, you know, you want to have a positive play experience playing the game for the first time. I would believe so. So I would probably recommend watch the reviews for the other Doctor Who Commander decks and then purchase one that's a bit more suited to new players. I feel like this deck is really suited towards players like me and people, a lot of other people watching this video where we've been playing this game for almost more than 10 years. So just keep that in mind when you're looking to spend your 40 or $50 on this deck, okay? So other than that, nine out of 10, this deck is fantastic, okay? Whenever I end these videos, I always say the same thing. Everybody always remember, eat healthy, okay? Work out every single day. Most importantly, you guys gotta remember to believe in yourself, all right? Peace out, people.